about healing in in our in our bodies. And so in let's go to Exodus 15, 26, and it says, if you diligently hearken uh, to the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all of his laws. He says, this is what God said to the people of Israel. I will not put any of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And so right in, right in the very beginning uh, of the word of God, we see that God is talking about healing. And, and so in Isaiah 53, verse 5, we're all familiar with these scriptures. He says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Surely he bore our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed. We are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you bore our sorrow, you bore our grief, you bore our pain in your body. We thank you for that. You were wounded for us that we might be whole. You know, and Brother Fred and I speak that over ourselves every single day when we take communion. You know, that our bodies are whole because Jesus was broken for us. He was wounded for us. And and he gives us peace, but he also brings us healing. And those are those, the healing waters. The river, river is within you. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the cat dips free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Let's read on. In first uh, Peter 2 24 he says that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to go to Revelation 22. Right now I'm just kind of building a foundation to talk about healing waters. Praise the name of Jesus. Revelations 22, 1 and 2. He showed me a pure river of water. Now, when I went to that, through that mirror, went through that portal, I went from the natural realm to the supernatural realm. And see, healing is over here in the supernatural realm, where disease and pain and sickness is in the natural realm. In the supernatural realm, where God is the God of all creation, and he is our healer. There's no sickness, no pain, no discomfort. He is our healer. Well, this is the river. He showed me a pure river of water, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruit, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. You know, many people, uh, they want to use natural remedies, remedies that they get from, from the earth and from the trees and from uh, many types of plants. God has just put healing all over the earth for us. And we we love to 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 use uh the the natural ingredients if we possibly can. Uh that's what we prefer to do. And I know that uh there there's many um natural remedies that come from from the from China and from the the Chinese um herbs and spices and and so we we know that God has put healing in the earth 
And then it says in um, Isaiah 58, 11, the Lord will guide you continually and will satisfy your soul in drought. Now I'm talking about healing waters and healing, healing waters may be for your, your thinking, for your mind. You know, people get stressed and they get, uh, their mind gets all cluttered and there's confusion. And then, and then the, the, by renewing their mind to the word, and I'm going to get into this in just a moment, then the water uh, of the word comes and it cleanses those thoughts. It says here, and I will give you, I will satisfy your soul, your thinking, your mind, your emotions, your attitude in drought and strengthen your bones and you shall be like a well-watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Do you have something you want to say, Brother Fred? Well, we have seen people lined up in the spring, Sherry. Uh, yeah. Different uh, springs uh, in, in this area. And they go there to get that water and to receive healing. And they gave many testimonies of how they had been right. healed. But that was all in the natural realm. And we have a God who supernaturally heals Hallelujah. it's greater than anything that we could receive from the natural realm. amen 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 uh, one of those places is called indian springs uh state park and it's uh not far from here about an hour from here and so brother fred and i went there to pray and to intercede and to open up uh the, the portal that's there and and we saw the people lined up by the spring with their bottles and their jugs and they were getting water uh, from the spring and then they began to share their testimony uh, with brother Fred and I it was beautiful okay let's water represents three different things and so this is the core of the message uh, tonight healing waters uh three different things that that water represents one it represents cleansing number two it represents the destruction of evil because sickness is evil disease is evil and it doesn't come from the lord it comes from the devil and jesus said i came to and we just had this last week uh, demolish or destroy the works of the devil and so so it, it brings cleansing it brings destruction to evil and it brings a blessing with it so those three things i want you to think about healing waters just i, I want you to just think about yourself being in that river can you see yourself in that river and you're just up to your shoulders and you're immersed in that in that in that in God's river tonight uh, and so if you've got muscles that are hurting you tonight then then that water's going over the muscles if if you've got joints that are hurting if you've had a headache all day uh, whatever it might be this message is 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 I want to bring it to a point where we can see God move in all of us tonight, yes. in all of us tonight. Yes. But let's let's go back to cleansing. You know, we see in, in Exodus, um, you know, verse 30, uh, I mean, chapter 30, verse 18, it talks about a tabernacle or the what's in the tabernacle. And it says, you shall put it between the lab, the, the, the the wash basin uh, to put it in where they're going to meet and the altar and you shall put water in it for Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet in the water when they go into the tabernacle to meet or when they come near the altar to minister to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord they shall wash with water lest they die so shall they wash their hands and their feet and it shall be a, a law forever for them for
for them and their descendants. And so it made a, this cleansing was very, very important uh, when we come to, into the presence of the Lord. If we're going to go from the natural to the supernatural, what does it say? Those that approach the mountain of God, they must have what? Clean hands, hands and, a pure heart. and a pure heart. And so that's that's extremely important. Now I'm going to bring this uh, an application to this to see how do we do this? What did the Lord share with me after I went through that, had that vision of going through the portal into the river? Uh, I'm going to share what he said to me. In Leviticus 16.4, it says, he shall put on, this is a, the, the minister shall put on holy linen and the linen trousers on his body. He shall be girded with a linen sash. Now, linen in the Bible is righteousness. And so we know that we're righteous because of what Jesus did. And so we're going to put on Jesus, if, we, if, you, if you will, and let the word come out of us. And, you know, Brother Fred and I were singing uh, this this chorus when um, Joy and Joy uh, George came uh, on the on the air tonight. And it goes, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your souls. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus, for he has healed you and made you whole. Well, that's what that righteousness does. It says that we're to put on those linen garments uh, when we come before the Lord. Because it, it's a cleansing. It's going to make us clean. Oh, hallelujah. And then the second part I said was to destroy the evil. So what did the flood do? What did the flood do? God came to Noah and told him to build an ark and to put two of every kind to bring his family to get on the ark and that he was going to do what? He was going to destroy evil with the flood. And so I said that water represents cleansing, it represents destruction of evil, and it represents our blessing. And so in Genesis 6, uh, verse uh, 17, uh, he said, And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under earth all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. There was so much evil that was going on. And it says, uh, the Apostle Paul said, there's nothing good that dwells in my flesh. In, in this flesh right here. There is nothing good that dwells in my flesh. So where is the good part in all of us? It's in our spirit. Who we are in Christ Jesus. That's where the good is. That's where the fruit is. That's where the productivity is, is within us because the, the flesh doesn't have anything good in it. Well, when we, when we step into those healing waters, then the flesh is brought to nothing. And, you know, I will say this in my vision. I could I could actually feel the the water uh, on my on my body. I could feel it uh, in the in the physical realm. I could feel uh, that water come upon me, and it felt so good. It felt so good. And you know, there's many people that love to uh, when they go in and they go into the sauna and they go into the the whirlpools and into the spring waters uh, that they're they're revived and life comes to them and that that's what we want we want the the evil to to leave us 
and any destruction to leave us. And we want the healing waters uh, to cover us and, and make us whole. Make us whole. Um, and then the last one is the blessing. And this is in Isaiah 35, verses 3 through 7. Strengthen, strengthen the weak ends and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful, be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. You know, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I shall repay. So you don't have to, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to uh, get into a big battle with someone or a fight with someone. You don't have to struggle with, with flesh, even your own flesh or somebody else's flesh. You don't have to struggle with that. Why? Because the healing waters are going to come and they're going to flow over you. And they're going to flow over the situation and bring healing and bring healing. With recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall see, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like the deer, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes if you feel like you're out there by yourself, you're not. God is right there. And he's bringing healing water to you tonight in Jesus' name to heal anything that, that hurts, any wounds that you may have from words that have been spoken to you or actions that have, that have come to you or things that have just been hurtful. Healing waters are flowing over you right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It says, and there will be streams in the desert. The parched ground shall be made a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of jackals where for each lake. There will be grasses and, and food to eat and 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 there'll be the healing waters that God has brought into your life. Hallelujah. Now, many times we do not take advantage and activate what is already ours. Now, there's a word that I want to cover tonight, and it's, it's the word soak. Have you heard the word? I'm sure if, if Sarah was with us tonight, she would know that word soak. What does it mean to soak in the Lord? Well, there's, there's three things that, that come to me when I think about soaking in the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. I think about praise. I think about worship. And I think about prayer. When I think about soaking in the Lord, and see, this is part of the supernatural healing waters. This message is is all, it's not, I, I, Father, just help us all to understand what you're telling us tonight, that we can have this, these healing waters come upon us at any time that we need those healing waters, that they will be there, that we can get into that water. We can go into that supernatural realm. Lord, we want that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And of course, we all know the, the scripture in Ezekiel 47, verses five through nine, where Ezekiel saw the, the, the waters. And again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that could not be crossed. You know, first of all, it was at, at the feet and then at the, at the knees and then at the loins and then completely immersed. And that's what it means to soak. To soak in the Lord means that you are immersed 
in his presence, mm -hmm. in the river of life. You're there. You're in the healing waters. And he's flowing over you. And he's flowing over your neck and over your back and over your hips and over your legs and your knees and your feet. Oh, hallelujah. Even the big toe that's been hurting. Oh, hallelujah. It's it's and you can even go completely under. And that, you know, that will cover your your brain and your mind and your ears and and your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. What was Ezekiel seeing here? He was seeing Revelation 22. He was seeing the pure river of God. That's what I saw in my spirit. Hallelujah. When I went from, from standing outside the mirror and I went through the mirror and I went into that river, that's what it was. It was the river of life. Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. And when I returned along the bank of the river were many trees on either side. What does that sound like? Revelation 22. Then he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern river, eastern re region. Go down into the valley and it enters into the sea. And it shall be that every living thing that, listen to this, that moves wherever the river goes will live. So if you get into this healing water, it will make you alive. Hallelujah. It will bring you back to life. You know, there are many pregnant women when they decide uh, to bring forth their babies, they want it done in water. They want it done in water because the baby has been living in water. He has been living, he or she has been living in encompassed in, in water. Hallelujah. And so they want that birth to be in, in a, a special containers a bathtub or uh they have many different kinds of of things but it's a beautiful way to bring forth uh a baby and just bring it forth into the into the water Whew, hallelujah and it says and there will be a great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. Hallelujah. I want to live, Lord. I want each one of you to live. Praise the name of Jesus. I want you to be free of any type of pain. Brother Fred and I want each one of us to move forward and to accomplish our purpose and our destiny. Hallelujah. And to, we want us to be fit. We want to be nourished. We want to be restored. Hallelujah. Did you know that God will reverse the aging process? Oh, hallelujah. We believe that, don't we? We speak that over ourselves every single day. What is the verse you say? God will satisfy our mouth with good things. And we'll renew, renew our, our youth like, like the eagles. eagles. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And that's what he's doing for us. Brother Fred in November will be 80 years old. In December, I'll be 78. Hallelujah. But we are like teenagers. <laughs> and I give God praise for that. And I thank you for the healing waters that flow in us. And that are flowing out to other people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want to give some application here. And in the word of God, there's three e examples where water was very important and played a big part in the healing of that, that individual. In 2 Kings 5, verse 10, we have... Uh, and Elisha sent a messenger to Naaman 
who was the leper, who had leprosy. And the prophet of God said, go to the Jordan River and dip yourself seven times. And when you come up on the seventh time, you will be whole. You will be clean. Remember I said that one of the, the components of water is that it's cleansing. And so this, this is what happened here. But why did it happen in the Jordan River? It happened in the Jordan River because of Joshua. Joshua, when he took the people of God from one side over to the promised land, over, over Jordan, he came back and he built an altar in the middle of the Jordan River to God. And he worshiped God there. Those rocks are still there today. The rocks that Joshua put there to worship the Lord in those waters are still there. People go there to be baptized. People go there to be uh, cleansed, to receive their healing in the Jordan River. And see, Naaman got very angry because it is a, it's a dirty river. But see, God has made it clean. Because of the worship and the praise and the honor that Joshua gave to the Lord, those waters are healing waters. And Naaman finally went there and he dipped himself seven times and he came up healed and whole. Now, I'm telling you tonight, if you will... Come into the presence of the Lord, into that river. Whatever it is that has been bothering you, has been bringing pain to you, that causes you to be stressed, it's going to leave you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the second one, of course, is the is the pool of Bethesda. And we know that in that on that pool that the angels would come down and would stir it. And the first person who got in, it was healing to them. And they were healed of their affliction, their sickness, their disease, whatever it might have been. But Jesus walked up one day and he saw this man laying on the by the pool. And he said, you know, what will you will that I do for you? And, and, and the you man... Will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? And and the and the man brought up all these excuses. <laughs> you know, well, you know, somebody gets in there before I do, and and uh, I can't do this, and I can't do that, and and many times I've heard this from people. You know, well, I just can't, I just can't do that. But Jesus was there. And Jesus is the fountain of life. He's the water. Hallelujah. And so there he was. And he told the man, he says, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. Hallelujah. Jesus went beyond this was on the Sabbath day. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they all got up in arms about what Jesus was doing. And Jesus went against that religious system. And what I'm telling you tonight is going against the religious system. When I'm telling you to go through the portal, get into the river, Receive the healing water and you will be made whole. That's the bottom line to this message tonight. And we've seen people do this. We've seen them come into the presence of the Lord, get into that river of life, and they are whole. They're healed from cancer. They're healed from diabetes. They're healed from arthritis. They're healed from a brain tumor. They're healed. And then John chapter 9, verse 7. 
is the blind man that comes to Jesus. And he says, Jesus tells him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and he washed and he came back seeing. Mm -hmm. So Jesus Hallelujah. had spit on the ground and made mud and put it on his eyes and then told him to go, go to the pool of Siloam. Uh, he had to go a specific place. He had to obey wow. the Lord. Obedience is um, very important to the Lord. And it helps us, you know, go into that spiritual realm. You know, most of the time people stay in the in the natural realm. And, and that's where headaches are. That's where stress is. That's where um, hardening of the arteries are. That's where heart disease is. Uh, that's where all the sickness and pain, it dwells in that natural realm, the fleshly realm. And, but when we begin to soak in the Lord. Remember, soaking is when we begin to praise him. We shut out everything else. When we begin to worship him, that's when we actually close our mouth and we just receive his presence. That's worship right there. That's being in his presence. And, and then when we begin to to pray, all of that puts us in the river of life. And that's where healing is. Healing waters. Now this was a short message and, and I pray that each one of you will uh, will receive what the Lord has for you tonight because I see God, changing some things uh, god is going to change some of your your what you eat uh and god is going to uh, bring forth um healing in your in your digestive system and uh, the hernia uh, that you've had for a while in the upper part of your chest area uh is is gone in jesus name you say, well, can God do that? Yes, God can do that. For years, I had a hernia. And then I went in for an x-ray before a surgery that they were going to do. And uh, they did a chest x-ray on me. And I said, well, you know, how does the hernia look? And they said, there is no hernia. God had taken it away. And so I know he can do it for you. And so that hernia, I speak it gone in Jesus name. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, just put it back on. I want to say something. Um, okay. Healing is very important to Sherry and I. We go around the world and minister on healing. And you might think, well, I've, I've heard about healing and I believe healing. Well, that that's fine, but our faith needs to continue uh, to grow, in, particularly in that area. And it, it really opens the door uh, to a lot of other things, a lot of other supernatural things. And if we have pain in our body or sickness in our body, we need to be healed. And, and that's the reason that uh, we talk about healing frequently um, to remind ourselves and, and to look at things a, in a different way because it is important and it's a beginning of other supernatural uh, occurrences that we can see mm -hmm. he healing and uh, there's a lot of times that uh, uh, healings are manifested immediately and then because we're uh, seeing the, those healings and te getting testimonies about that, that releases God's power and uh, other things happen in our lives. We need the Lord operating supernaturally in all of our lives. We, we, it may be healing for us or healing for somebody else or prosperity or uh, of fear being gone and bringing peace and joy. There's so many supernatural things uh, that 
that need to be in manifestation in all of our lives. And this is a good way to remind ourselves that this is uh, something that we have received. We've individually, uh, we've been healed about different situations. And uh, it, it's a good thing to remind us. You, you know, Peter talks about stirring up. Well, what we're saying is stirring up your pure conscience mm. so that you remember it. That this, may, this is not the first time you've heard about about healing, but but bringing it back again and again is very important. I mean, that, that we might have confidence uh, in the Lord moving, not not just that He does, but that it happens in our lives. It happens in your lives. We need that confidence and boldness that he's operating in our lives. And, and so uh, I say receive your healing tonight. Whatever area yeah, that, uh, that you've been uh, uh, having pain or difficulty or uh, whatever it is, receive healing tonight because the Holy Spirit has brought this forth for us all to be healed. It, Amen. Jesus purchased healing on the cross. It's a finished work. We don't have to have Jesus come down and do something else. It's finished. It has been purchased Hallelujah. by the precious blood of Jesus Christ.